give it something socially responsible to do. Can't we just let it go? This thing needs to learn how to adapt, man. You've worked with some amazing directors in your career. Steven Spielberg, Steven Soderbergh, Robert Zemeckis. What is the first thing that, when you think of working with Christopher, that sort of differentiates him from them? Mm. Um, I've never worked with a better leader. I cannot say I've ever worked with a better problem solver. And half of the problems he just solves by pure will. That everything must keep moving forward. Keep moving forward. He never goes backwards. He never goes backwards. Whether it, he won't go reshoot anything, even if you found out something was wrong, I don't think he would reshoot it. Um, he uh, uh, conceptually, he's able to realize things on screen to actually put them up there in a larger and more awe-inspiring scope than any other director that I know or I've seen. Um, yet, when we were shooting the personal stuff, which this film's full of, it felt like a small independent film. A few takes. Don't be, he's not a perfectionist. I thought he was gonna be a perfectionist. He's not a perfectionist. He actually wants the imperfections. Hmm. Um, and you take as much time as you need. But um, he also has a great sense of humor, which not many people know. He's got a killer sense of humor. Um, which is really funny, because the other night I heard at the American Cinematique thing, he said that you actually, people think you just are sort of funny and carefree all the time, and he, he thinks of you as very serious. He didn't find me funny at all, he said. <laughs> yeah. Well, we were both very serious. Mm. And in our seriousness came some of the things in hindsight that I found, <laughs> I found his humor to be really witty and dry. Um, uh, so, you know, this is a very personal story for him. Mm. His brother wrote it. His wife's producing it. He's got a daughter himself. You know, and I think I, th I think it shows. I think it showed when I first read the script. I felt like he was going for something more personal that he'd even gone for before. Well, one of those personal smaller moments you talk about is is one of the scenes for all the film's amazing scope that everyone talks about is Cooper's there. He's seeing the video of his fan, his kids for the first mm -hmm. time, or after many years. And was that an instance where it was just a couple takes? Was that was that half a day? Was that a no? A we did that was first thing in the morning, and I, everything in there, I believe, Chris told me is the first take. And I didn't want to see what I was going to see in the film, and I obviously didn't want to rehearse it either. So I mm. just came in, and, and they set up, and as he said, technically challenging because they knew they needed to get it. And I and I was like, this is a one, this is a oneer. This is where we're going to really get it, because I will never have a first reaction again. Um, and so I think it's, I think he set up multiple cameras, to cover it, and we shot it a few more times. But like he said, the first takes went in there. And I have to ask, once you saw the final film itself, after no doubt being in front of much, a lot of green screen and, and all sorts of stuff. No green screen. No green screen at no, all? No, no. So th I don't want to give anything away, but the scene where you're sort of in the, the fifth dimension sort of thing at the end is, that's, you're like in a To thing. scale, that's, that's, that was an entire hangar. Oh my gosh, wow. Built. And you're on harnesses, you're just flying away. All over. For the latest from HitFix, visit HitFix.com or download the new HitFix app on your Roku device.